Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the uh, August 1st, 2019 Board of Selectmen Sewer Commission meeting. All members are present. First item on the agenda is uh, executive session. John. All right. Uh, consider entering into executive session under the provisions of Mass General Laws 30A, Section 21A, Part 3, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bonding bargaining with union personnel, DBW, and cemetery unions. Uh, I move to enter into executive session under the provisions of Mass General Law, just to the, Chapter 30A, Section 21A, Part 3, and discuss strategy with respect to collective bonding with union personnel, DBW, and cemetery. Second. Mr. Kittredge? I'm accusing myself. Mr. Rajesh Kumar? Yes. Mr. Crowley? Yes. Mr. Hadley? Yes. Mr. Rucho? Yes. And we will be reconvening in an open session. Board is now reconvening in open session. The first uh, item on the agenda is public comments. Anybody? Hearing none, next item on the agenda is the approval of meeting minutes, July 11th, 2019, regular session. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Uh, July 11th, 2019, executive session. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Right into the warrants. Yep. I move to approve warrants for the period covering July 12, 2019 to August 1st, 2019. Crown payable warrants FI 2019 55, FI 2020 3 4 and five. Sewer FI 2019 SE 28 and 29. FI 2020 SE 2, 3 and 3A. Payroll PR 2019 27, 2020 1 and 2. MLP FI 2020 number 3 and number 4. School FI 2, 2019 S 21 and FI 2020 Yes, two. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Next is uh, Cheryl St. Louis, Treasurer Collector, for the review and approval of the uh, note results for the senior center. of this and then each copy has four can okay. you just so the public knows tell them how much the, the bond was and the interest rate and all the, the details please yep so um, the band was for 5.7 million um, the interest rate came out to 1.4167 and we went with BNY Mellon and there was um, eight bids and they were the top and so the town knows the board voted um, we, we're not ready to bond the senior center yet because we don't know what the final price is. So this uh, is a temporary bond for six months. And at the uh, conclusion of the six months, we will uh, t go for the permanent bond for the senior center. You make a motion. A second. second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Thank you. Uh, next is uh, John Scannell, Div uh, Division Director of DCR, Division of Water Supply Protection, update on the Regional Recycle Center. Good evening. Hello. Um, I'll be brief. Uh, uh, this is a once a year visit with the board. Um, the center continues to run well. They ran uh, 149 open days in last fiscal year. Um, mostly a volunteer operation, uh, servicing, as you know, seven towns in the watershed. Um, they continue to run really with, with limited issues and uh, open, same schedule they've been for a number of years, uh, 
three days a week and, and one Saturday a month. Um, they uh, spent a little money this past spring to do some uh, um, resurfacing on, on the site, probably the big project of the year. The majority of the site is gravel and, uh, you know, between dust and mud, it's been a bit of a challenge off and on. Um, and they uh, put grindings down on the areas that weren't paved this, this past spring, which really has improved uh, the condition. Um, beyond that, they continue to run, like I said, mostly volunteer operations and uh, always looking for volunteers because they serviced. I, this, this year, they, they had 30,000 cars over the course of the year. Wow. That they were open. Now, a lot of that is people coming in looking for stuff you know, in the reuse center, but they, they uh, took <coughs> in more than, um, more than uh, a million pounds of construction and, and that type of de debris, amongst other things. So very successful, uh, running well. They are seeing some, some spikes in um, costs um, all of a sudden from, from haulers and recyclables are began be a lot of recycling streams are drying up, so it's hard to get rid of some things. So costs are going up. But trying to hold the line, but may need to may need to look at some increases in this fall in some of their their prices. But <coughs> otherwise, running well. Questions from the board? I just have one. This uh, pink bag thing we're going to go through. If you away with that at all with the uh, with no. the rubbish? No, not yeah. aware. Is it? Nancy's going to give an update. Oh, okay. Uh, <coughs> it's, it's just something going to pick up uh, uh, clothing. Uh, you want to skip ahead to your update uh, on that, Nancy? Just so John basically, knows. Um, well, actually, we can sit down and go over it if you want. Um, the pink bag program is um, it's put on by um, the um, gentleman who does the simply recycling and they will go around with a van they do the same trash routes as we have um, they hand out pink bags they do a flyer and let everybody on the trash route know that in your pink bag you can put um, clothing shoes accessories households tools small um, toys um, <coughs> and they have a whole list of things that small appliances um, and you can put it up with your trash and they will come around and pick up your pink bag. If you're cleaning out a house and you need more bags, they'll drop off as many bags as you need. The whole idea is to get um, a lot of this stuff out of the waste streams and hopefully cut down on our tipping fees. Um, and they also give the town back funds. They're estimating, looking at what we collect and what we dump, we'll probably get about twelve or $1,300 back a year. Um, but hopefully it will, um, and then they reuse some of the stuff and, um, just getting it out of the waste stream and that was, it's a program that was in the town of Grafton I had heard about it in SWAT's been working on it norm has been working mm -hmm. on it um, it just went to Shrewsbury and now they're working with the city of Worcester so um, yeah we think so too I think it's gonna yeah be I, think, I think anything that's working to get stuff out of the waste stream so I think it would just it would redu reduce the number of what's coming in for you for you people and, it, and, it, and hopefully will and that's it's not a bad thing either. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Good. If I could just go ahead. So it, it is still limited. The only people that can come in are by license check. Seven towns. You have to be a resident of one of the seven towns. That can yep. use the facility at all. Yeah. Okay. And we certainly don't need more traffic. Like more people coming. So I, I don't see a change. Yeah, can I, 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 can I just ask a question in regards to well, the DCR side, I mean, I guess sure. you don't have to give us an answer right now, but the causeway, the overgrown grass, I don't know if you guys do it, state DPW, I don't well, know the answer. It is We've actually, talked about it. It is actually DPW. Okay, okay. that's um, fine. I know there is, on occasion we have gone over and done something, but yeah, it's <laughs> inside that wall is, is, is that in that right away. And in fact, if you may, may not remember, when when we did the design for the stormwater work, there was discussion of the sidewalk going in and a grass strip, and right. DOT was you know hemming and hawing about the grass strip, and that's why we they paved the whole stretch between the sidewalk and the wall. So that you know, and 
now it's just weeds growing up. Weeds growing up. That's fine. So well, yeah, I just only I, I remember us talking about it when yeah. we met with the state. But thank you. Yes. Since uh, Mr. Bruto asked, you know, BCR question. Uh, Good. Yep. <laughs> Do you have any plan on uh, leveling or paving the parking lot over the at the rail trail? Mm -hmm. We don't have any plan for paving. We continue to struggle with that uh, puddle that no matter what we do, <laughs> no matter what we do, and your, your, your town administrator reminds maybe me regularly when, there's, when the maybe hole gets. An, maybe an asphalt will work better. Yeah, no, it, it, we do need to um, look at alternatives because it's that hole. You know, a lot of people are using it. That yeah, and that hole continues to open up and no matter what we do, endless. Uh, Thank you comes back. Anybody else? Could you just so the public knows uh, announce what the hours of the recycle center dates? So the, the re yeah, the recycle center is open uh, Tuesdays um, 9.30 to 11.30, I think. Wednesday afternoons 2.30 to 4.30. Um, Thursday evenings 5 to 7. And the third Saturday of the month. And through the winter hours, December, January, February, they close those Thursday evening hours and do a second Saturday. Thank you. And then they do special things all the time. Yeah, and then special collections, obviously hazardous waste collections, shredding days, things like that. In our yeah, shredding day coming up, I think that's one of our announcements. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Joe. Uh, next item is Brian Keevan, Department of Conservation and Recreation, Watershed Forestry Project Proposal. to raise awareness at your level and hopefully throughout the town of uh, an issue that is currently ongoing that we don't want to uh, let go unresolved. Which is, uh, I basically go, well, a minute mine. Maybe you've heard of it. Uh, maybe you weren't aware that it was in your town. But uh, the state is very interested in uh, trying to control this, this plant and keep it from getting spread around. Before we get into that discussion, um, I guess there was a there was a request on behalf of the, the board to come in and answer any questions. So uh, you know, I can I can give a quick spiel, or I can answer any questions that anybody in particular had first. I'd ask for a quick. Hmm? I'd ask for just a. a yeah, I was going to say I I, I so do your spiel first and let us ask <laughs> the question. Sure, sure. So. Um, uh, Obviously, we've been doing forest management on water supply properties throughout all of our uh, watersheds for you know decades now, and uh, the reason we're we're here tonight is because uh, uh, since mm, uh, the last five or six years, we've uh, been a little bit more proactive uh, in our public outreach process. So uh, the, the letters that we sent around to select boards this year that was actually a first for us. Uh, we do post on our website our annual proposals for new forest management projects that we want to do. Uh, this year, we went one step further and tried to try to elicit some, some feedback, some comment, at least get some, some word out to the public. Uh, in addition to what we told you and what we usually post on our website, um, uh, we put together what's called a, a story map here using ArcGIS Online. Uh, this is something that anybody can access uh, with a web browser by searching uh, the DCR water supply forestry. You can just search for DCR water supply forestry, you'll, you'll find this on our web page. Uh, this, uh, this particular web map uh, shows all of the lot proposals throughout all the watershed system this year. The West Boylston ones actually, this is an interactive <coughs> map, but do you have control of this right now? Yes. So with a mouse, you could actually zoom in and out on this map right now, right. Zoom, zoom into West Boylston. Uh, you can drag it around, you can look at stuff. 
but each individual lot, like if you zoomed into the West Boylston lot, 215 right there. I'm losing it. Whoop. West Boylston's the only town I noticed that doesn't have the name of the town on it. <laughs> every other uh, town, every other town does. <laughs> so special. West Boylston, you know, right here, I guess it is, right? So once you once you've identified the, the area you're interested in, you'll notice the tabs across the top of the screen, and uh, WA twenty two fifteen is the one lot that our chief forester proposed this year for the town of West Boylston. So there's a tab across the top towards the right end there, WA twenty two fifteen. You click on that tab. Uh, that will bring you to an individual map that shows that lot and all the information that we review internally for that our foresters hand to our internal review team. So where it is, how many acres they plan to cut, uh, the kind of silver culture they want to do, whether there are any issues in terms of uh, stream crossings, wetlands, rare species, uh, wildlife issues. All of that is 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 uh, is contained in this. So on the on the left hand side, you could scroll down through there. All of those little black dots on the very left-hand edge are different pages within this map. And each, as you scroll, if you just scroll right there, you'll go from page to page and the, um, the map itself will update as you move around. Okay. And focus in with different, different features identified on the map. So, uh, there's a, so there's a full description of what is proposed on this one West Boylston lot right there. Um, you can see where it is, it's right up against the Holden Town line. In fact, half the lot, I think, is in Holden. Uh, it's a lot we worked, I think, in 2010. Uh, we did a little bit of thinning on that hill. We accessed it via the little cul-de-sac on, uh, uh, well, it's in Holden, so at that point it's Malden Street, but it's at Goodale Street. Uh, uh, we had a log landing up there, <coughs> went up, uh, crossed the power line, hit a little bit of stuff on top of the hill. This time around, we, we thinned that time. This time around, we, uh, we're releasing some of the regeneration that, was, uh, that, came, that came up in response to that, that thinning. So, uh, it looks like, I think the, uh, the amount of regeneration proposed is in a table in here. I think a little bit, if you scroll up a little bit from where you just are right now. Oop, down a little bit. <laughs> a little bit more down into silviculture. I think we talk about, there we go. So uh, our foresters are proposing uh, intermediate level cuts, which is some sort of partial cutting, not an entire regeneration patch of about 20 acres and about 21 acres of patch cuts ranging in size from anywhere from about a quarter acre <coughs> to a couple of acres in size, just to release that existing uh, regenerated, regenerating trees and uh, try to build up that diverse mosaic of forest structure. Uh, so that's the basic spiel. That's the lot you're looking at this year in West Boylston. Our, our hope going forward is that this becomes uh, the same thing we'll do, we'll do every year. In fact, if you want it here, you can see stuff that's going on uh, proposed at where river watershed, water watershed, it's all contained in this one map. So uh, this will be our public interface from here forward. Questions? What are you studying? Excuse me? When are you starting? Oh, this, what we're doing right now, this is the uh, proposal process. So we're, uh, we're, we're accepting public comment uh, on these and our internal review has already happened. So these are basically what we intend to do. Um, the, once the public comment and review period is over and we've responded to any, you know, any significant comments, I guess, uh, the foresters are free to go ahead and start um, laying out where they want to make regeneration cuts and where the skid roads are going to be and all that kind of stuff. So that could happen as we, we, we um, the forces work continuously throughout the year, but we, we put lots of timber out to bid four times a year. So September, November, March, and June are the four periods we put in. This one, since it's new and there's probably other things in the pipeline before this, this one probably wouldn't get worked until uh, over the winter, uh, depending, depending on how thick the snow is and how easy it is to access. But, uh, likely it would not get marked and put out to bid until probably 2020 uh, and uh, and then the logger would have a two or three years to actually get the work done so nothing's going to happen in, you know right away on this okay, okay. and uh, yeah I just hope that you know anybody in the public right now has uh, you know, a little bit more uh, knowledge about I don't know, and take a look at what we're doing. The public comment period, unfortunately, uh, as, I, as I mentioned to Nancy in our emails, ends tomorrow at close of business. So we're a little late in this, but uh, we, we tried. We sent out the letter a while ago, so we did get some notice out there. Um, 
So if there's no more questions about this lot or forestry in general, I just did want to make a plug to, uh, to get folks to be aware of Mile a Minute Vine. It's uh, sort of a, a hot item in invasive plant awareness and control in the state right now. Uh, we have uh, a big infestation right down the road uh, on Route 140 where the power lines cross. Um, we, um, we've been working with National Grid who does vegetation maintenance on that <coughs> power line. They're doing some of the work. DCR staff and some volunteer intern staff are doing some of the other work. We're hand pulling it. Uh, we're trying to uh, meet, you know, control this plant and keep it from producing more seed as quickly as possible. It's gonna take a few years to kind of exhaust the existing seed bank. Uh, but we also wanted to make sure that if it exists outside the areas we know, we, we certainly would like to be aware of that let uh, Mass Department of Ag, who's responsible for controlling all this throughout the state, know and uh, uh, make sure that it's not getting into other properties that just we, we haven't found yet. So that's why I wanted to bring this to your attention. And, uh, to the Residents town. have this on their private property. Will the, uh, you know, a resident that owns five acres of, of wooded land say, will the uh, Department of Agriculture come remove it? From that property, or, it, or is it? I think they probably want to meet with the landowner and talk about control options. Uh, there may be ways for uh, Department of Ag to uh, get contract work in to remove it on behalf of uh, of, of the landowner. Uh, it may be something the landowner is interested in and wants to deal with themselves, but they they're really interested in making sure this plant doesn't but become as bad. But on private property, contract contact the Department of Agriculture to. For, for options, they could contact they could contact me directly if it's you know uh, right against watershed property. I'd certainly want to know that right away. But definitely, uh, MDAR would be the the primary point of contact for any invasive plant. Uh, Do you have Davy Tree looking for this too while they're out there for the long term beetle? <laughs> you know, you know the um, the people who first alerted us to this. I don't know if it was Davy Tree, but I think it was the contractors who just do general vegetation maintenance on the power lines. Oh, wow. They notified that, oh, you got it a mile a minute here. So so we found out about it last September yep. for the first time. We did some pulling. Uh, we've done uh, pulling a couple of times this year. Uh, and uh, in fact, I was over at the site earlier today uh, and I emailed back and forth with the National Grid contractor today. They're gonna send somebody around, a crew in there next week to do a little bit more work to kind of clean up anything that was missed the first time around. Um, so, but we're, so they're doing sort of their their heavy hand in the uplands, and we're doing our sensitive hand pulling uh, down in the, the stream bank. It's Gatesbrook. Right, because I think it's Davy Tree going to be going through there again very soon. I think they're scheduled to send about 60 people in there before. This must be ALB uh, yeah, survey work yeah, that they're doing. I know they have you know, I think they're knowledgeable enough that they probably would. They uh, would if they were cold. If, That's if, what it, I mean. Yeah, yeah. Um, you got them walking all through the woods. And we, we can send them a note. We, we, down as, yeah, we, we them know down. who to talk to to, to, right. to, to get okay. them to send yeah. us a note. Yeah. I know they're about to go back down in there again. So. Mm -hmm. They're even looking, uh, I live up in Princeton, and they're looking at you know, spot checks outside the quarantine zone. So my, I got a letter just yesterday saying, hey, we're coming to your neighborhood. Uh, right. so, so they're on it. Yeah, they're, they're really, they really want to make sure that they don't let ALB get any worse than it was. <coughs> Thank you very much. Right. You're welcome. Next item on the agenda is uh, Mary Foley, the applicant for uh, Finance Committee. Tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, what your background is, and why you're interested in the Finance Committee. I've lived in town 36 years. I have a bachelor's degree in accounting. I was an accountant for three years, stay-at-home mom, and now I'm a special ed teacher at Aspet Regional. I've been treasurer of the um, <coughs> PTA, treasurer of the Women's Club at Our Lady Good Council Church, and I'm currently treasurer of the St. Vincent Paul Society. <coughs> So, <laughs> anybody have any further discussion or questions? Thank you. Okay. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mary. Thank you. Next is Gary Kelleher, DPW Director. Excuse myself.
Good evening. Hello. Hello. I just have a, um, a couple of things here. I know there's been questions about our process for um, permits for open opening a roadway. Now, I did bring, I'm sure you guys have this already, but I did bring a, a copy of our actual permit. So this is what we, we ask people to fill out when they're applying to open a road based on the moving rates from the town. I know there's some, there are some questions. There has been some uh, street openings that were performed um, in my eyes that shouldn't have been. Um, so, so you gentlemen know any state aid money that is used to resurface a road, there is a moratorium that used to be seven years. So I, did, I know I told you seven before, but it's now five. So uh, you cannot open a road that local aid monies have been used to, to redo for five years without special permission or in case of emergency situation. That being uh, water, sewer, gas, but anything water, sewer, obviously would, the permission would come from the Board of Commissioners, that being you. So um, I do have a, a list that I recently got of all the recently paved roads using state aid uh, on my bulletin board. Um, I am, am in conversation with the state all the time and this is just a process that's gonna be um, it's going to be scrutinized a little bit more than it has been. So this will call for inspections. This will call for um, site visits. This will call for obviously, um, and I know like an Eversource has their own inspectors come out and, and inspect the job, but it's also going to be required inspection by the DPW for proper compaction or flowable fill, depending on what the situation is. Um, the rules and regs also state that th whoever opens the road or installs whatever line has to be is responsible for the maintenance of that ditch for or, or that that pavement for two years um, doubtful if that has been followed um, and I'm not saying in West Boylston anywhere but it is in West Boylston's rules and regs and that will be followed um, I just wanted to keep you you gentlemen up to up to snuff on that if you will so if there's any questions regarding that permit or um, please feel free so on Maple Street with the gas company cut across and they put a uh, regular fill in there, are they going to come back and fix it correctly? They have now, and this was just recently found out this week, which I read through the rules and regs. It's two years. They're responsible for two years. And I've already talked to the resident engineer that, and he, he gave the sign off on that. The DPW did not. I have been in, in, in conversation with him in, in, in my eyes that he is, will be required to repair. It says they're required. If Eversource, I would assume, is going to say yes, we're going to come fix it. But if it's uh, a a sewer guy that doesn't live in town that happened to have a job in West Boylston to fix somebody's sewer, and they say I'm not going to, I'm done. I was a year ago. I'm not going to fix that. What's the recourse? Well, the recourse is to. I mean, you're saying someone that doesn't do or will not. Yeah. If you, I mean, ha what? What's the bite in the regulation to force a contractor to? Well, you could all you could always because it does state in the regulations. You could always go through the legal process. My course of action has always been if somebody doesn't adhere to the rules and regs of any town, that they will not be issued a permit by my department for any reason. And, and that's why I said you're not going to have an issue with an ever source. But if you have a one-off contractor that did a a, a sewer repair. And he, it, it was the one sewer repair the guy had done in West Boylston in 10 years. I understand he can't, he's not going to get another contract, another per permit. He's not going to be looking for one. Do we have, absent any lead, there's no bite in there that says, hey, you got to do this, you got to do that. It's, it would have no. to go through the legal process? No, so, yeah, I would say the legal process, other than what it says in the rules and regs about a two year responsibility. So, can we ask them to be bonded for that? Do we do? Yeah, they do. They are required to be bonded for that. They have to. They have to produce an insurance bond for every every job they do. So wouldn't the bond if they didn't cover it? Cover it? it that would cover it. it. It all depends on the expiration of that bond and how long they have it for. A big place like like the Grid or EverSource um, would have a, a blanket bond, um, and they would give that to us, and it pretty much covers them year round. It's generally renewed yearly, but they would have a blanket bond 
as, a, as would a contractor, and in other, I can't say West Wilson, I haven't checked that, but other contractors and other communities um, do, do submit blanket bonds, and I was always in conversation with the insurance agency and the contractor that was responsible for doing the work. It's got to be tightened up. It's got to be, and it will be tightened up. So um, um, I apologize for, for the, the misgivings we had uh, on a couple of situations, but um, they won't happen again. There's a lot of marks that I see um, driving through town, and I'm sure you gentlemen see them too. The white mark, the white paint, the blue paint. I have no idea. I haven't has seen a permit for them yet. So I'm, I, I've got to keep an eye on it. I just don't want people going in and cutting up the street. All these regulations are on the town's website and yes, sir. public works. Yes, sir. You get the application there. Or you yes, sir. Any other questions on street openings? What are you doing next? Sewer abatement or road bad release? I do have, I have the sewer abatement forms right here. Uh, I have the first one here is from 68 Bowen Street from a Diana Engelbert in, um, Engelbert, I'm sorry. And what I have, it appears that she uh, had a, a boiler failure in her house and lost uh, an excess amount of water due to that. And she did have uh, prices, she did have contractors, she did have the repair. And she was looking for a rebate of $254.43. The bill she paid was $288.67. So what I have done um, with Ms. Engelbart is I've gone back 18 months for her charges and averaged out. Um, and her obviously her last bill was extremely high. I and mean, we're talking that she was $37, $46, and her last bill was $288.27. So at any rate, I averaged it out, and um, it, my figures came to the amount to be um, abated at $246.10. Now, um, by the documentation she gave me and, and the woman's word, um, she um, that's the only way I have of knowing. There is no secondary meter. There is no meter readings to know the, exactly how much water she lost. So my only course of action was to take an average. I don't know if you gentlemen have her bill in front of you, but to take an average of her usage and um, recommend the amount of $246.10 to be abated. Yeah, because the usage was almost perfect. Every yeah. month, monthly, it was, it was all the way down, it was the same. It didn't get that one month. Exactly, one exactly. Period, so. so under our regulations, is there a section for this that we Excuse me. For our policy, is there a section that we can, that we've equipped people you. like this in the past? Yes, yes. There yes, I think there was, a matter of fact, I had a whole a sample sheet of how many uh, abatements have happened in the past. And you guys in the same type, same of, type of situation. As long as um, the abatement is obviously it's for uh, the water that does not go into the sewer system. We have a motion? I make a motion to approve the abatement. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? So moved. The second one I have is uh, Mr. McAdams of uh, 38 Henry Street. And uh, the note that we got from him with the application for abatement stated we had a water spigot burst and caused our outdoor faucet to run for an unknown amount of time. Again, there's no way of me to know how much water they lost. Um, uh, a spigot, a broken spigot, um, does not go into the sewer system, but just run on, onto the road. So I did the same thing with the average from the same time period, and it came, um, their average was 79.89. Ian, I'm trying to see the amount I recommended for abatement. I think. I'm looking at a, uh, I'm looking at a charge report. It, it's in the 150 to one. 130 to 150 range on the bills you gave us, and it did go up to 180. 179.50 was the last right. bill, yes, sir. But you're saying the, what, what, the average you got was 70 something? No, the, uh, I'm sorry, the abatement amount would be 79.89. I'm sorry. Okay. So the average of I all did these the average, bills, right, right. Did the average and subtracted it off the, the amount. Because there's some bills like 123, 123, 120. 140, 
How far did you go back to get the average? Uh, 18, 18 months. I went to the That's first fine. the first reading of uh, in January okay. of 18. So if you, yeah, but if you go back 18 months. Um, and I did both both the same. I went back to the first reading, the first quarter, if you will, of January of 18. Start with 130, 118, and you take the average of all of these bills, it'll be 100 bucks. Does that make sense? So, in the past, we've have we ever denied anything like this that you can recall? Or just these are the cases. I know we've denied some, but I don't want to set a precedent. Is this in our policy that these type of people? Every equipment failure once since I've been on the board that's come before us, we've approved. We've done, we've done equipment failure. We have not done um, watering of lawns right. or pools. Like that. that are in the policy that they have to Right, we have suggested, uh, such as a, a situation with a, a broken spigot, that a secondary motor um, um, meter should be installed in the house. So we always suggest that, that they purchase the meter from the water department, have a secondary meter for external watering purposes. So if this happens, we know exactly how much. How much does an external meter cost to have it installed in the house? It's, it's generally in the $140 to $200 range. For the meter itself or the meter and the labor? The meter and the labor. $1,500. Fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah, that's. I, I thought it was a lot more expensive than that. When you, well, okay. Well, I, I guess I'm. I'm going by where I came from. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, you call. I. I looked into it years ago. It's four hundred just for the water department. I just, see. Okay. See, I'm used to having a water department under my purview, so we we charge the folks exactly what the meter cost us. Probably a different style of meter. We used Hersey, one hundred forty dollars, and the town cost. They paid us for the meter, and they had to hire the plumber. Right, and that's what I'm saying. The plumber. It's it's. So, it's not economically feasible to put in a second meter in, in case you're going to have a, 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 a break. If you have a giant garden that you water every single day, that's a different story. Right, or an irrigation system, irrigation. certainly, certainly, certainly. I'm not aware of how much a plumber would get or how long it would take or the, the copper or what they have to put in the line, just what it would cost uh, the person to have to pay the town for the meter. Second. Any further discussion? system may be doing how it is done and then the bill? Yeah, that's what we've done in the past. No, the, the, regular, the policy says that they must pay the bill. No, no I'm asking you not. It, but the, the calculation, is it, is it, do we usually take an average of the previous 18 months and then yeah. deduct? That's all we, yeah, that's the only system we use because there's really no other way to, there's no other way to really do it. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? All right. Aye. Opposed? So moved. You have a Joe Evangelista? Uh, Mr. Yeah, Mr. Evangelista applied for a... I need to recuse myself because I've done business with him in the past. At any rate, recently um, there are a, um, three, I believe, um, units being he applied for to put on Woodland Street at Pinecroft in the area of Pinecroft and he asked for a permit to go underneath the pavement of a Woodland and I have some maps if they want to oh thanks, thanks. Right, okay. there's one for everybody if they want to oh okay All right. oh at any rate um, underneath the island at, at Pinecroft, I'm just going to call it Pinecroft because everybody, everybody knows actually where it is. And then tie into a manhole on Prospect. Uh, my issue with that, and I understand that the board will make the final decision, my issue with that is, for one thing, it's fairly recently paid within three years. It would fall under the moratorium. And it would go under two pieces of roadway. And Grassy Island. My problem with that, gentlemen, is that once that is completed, I'll take one. Thank you. Once it's completed, it would have to be uh, an, an easement would have to be granted for that sewer line because it would be my intention never to own it. So the contractor that put it in would have to maintain that forever. And my issue with that, again, is we would have to, if something happened, we would have to dig up two sections of roadway and one. Um, grassy area, triangle of a uh, common, if you will. Um, so my recommendation to the Sewer Board of Commissioners is um, is not to allow that. 
Um, as the gentleman, Mr. Evangelista, does have an alternative of putting E1s and going th out to the trunk, which has been done in the past, which runs in the backside of his properties. So, if I could just ask. So, now he wants to go from these, these yellow properties here across. Across Woodland. Yeah. Across the common, the green area, into a manhole that's out in, on the other side in the prospect. Okay. But. He has a he has a way he can do it without going this way. And how yes, would he, he do that? Yes, he can put in E1 uh, uh, E1 thrashers and tie into the trunk that runs behind the property. Well, well, so you put in a what? Like a pump? It's an E1 yeah, pump. I'm sorry, a pump. It's, a, it's a pump. So you'd have to pump up to the pump up to the trunk, right? And that that's on a road behind. That's up on a road behind. Um, the trunk is up here behind his property. Is it about the same distance away as? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Probably Joe would know the exact uh, uh, footage uh, better than I would, but but it's it's because it goes up behind. Well, from the from the dwellings themselves, there's two dwellings here, and it'd have to go up back to the trunk. Joe, do you know what exact the um, the distance is from the dwellings to the trunk? To the, the existing trunk? Yeah. Yeah, I would say it's about 200 feet. Okay. So roughly, yeah, roughly the same distance. Why, why do you want to go under the road versus to the existing trunk? Uh, for, it's a gravity feed system if we go that way. Versus having to have a pump. Right. And um, also, we public water is there also, so we have no access to public water without going into the road at this point. So what's your option to get public, to get water? Are you going to uh, dig wells at these houses? or Apparently, you'd have to put wells in if... Or, if well, there is. There was a water line that was put in from the main the hydrant further up yep. um, that does go to your to, to the property so I don't know I have no problem with that does excuse that, me does that not part of the, the moratorium road the, the the water line is already there somebody tapped into that prior to me yeah and there is a very distinct ditch uh, ditch line if you will or pavement um, ditch line that does go across from the hydrant across to yep. your property line we did that for the 243 house. Okay, and I, as far as I, I not knowing the particulars of the, of the size of the line you put in, Joe, I, I would I would believe that that same source could be used for these two units for water. As long as I get permission here tonight, I would that would be acceptable to me. To tap to not to go across the road to tie into it where you've already or someone and already has. We can't give only. you permission to tie into the water because right. that, that's the no, water department. That's right. to go to that get the water to the meat back from the hydrant again. Where the water line is. I don't know if you gentlemen have ridden up in that area, but there's a very distinct ditch line that does come from a hydrant across yeah. across that newly paved, well, three years paved surface to uh, Mr. Evangelist's properties for the in initial building. So he needs approval to from the water. He's going to need the water uh, approval from the water department and the, and the water oh, commissioners. The water department's also. There. I have a question, Gary. We can get the water. I mean, is this just this, you this already piece? Have water right here. I understand, but is this just a piece that was paved here only? It, that, that it was what that was paved. This piece is that what we're talking about? That has more. No, this more whole, this whole, No, this yeah. This piece was paved, in, as well as the whole intersection was paved. So all all of that is covered under a five-year moratorium. Okay. So so you would be cutting across for sewer, obviously woodland right here, and across you'd be tapping in. I I have no problem going, but if if, if where. The water department, you pay it's sixty thousand dollars in water fees, so I'm sure they're going to give us access to that hydrant. The question is, but you already have access to that hydrant. We do, but there's only there's only one inch line coming out of there. For okay, the so that's what I said. Single I didn't family know, that would be under the water department. I don't okay. know what, what size. So line we're going to need we're going to need a, we're going to need a four inch line to go back in and bring a four inch line across to service these these two buildings. Okay. And that would have to be initiated with the water department and then the water commissioners to see if that line could be. I would much rather see that line made bigger than do another cut and to run it across here for water which is not in front of us do it another cut because you've already got an apparent cut that the that and and the sewer couldn't go through that same cut no the sewers uh, so sewers further down no, halfway down to the location. island okay. different location I, I can i can i can show you the hydrant is up here so he cut Somebody cut and put a ditch, very obvious ditch, across here for water service. The hydrants on this side of the road. Okay. Cut across the road. This is where that water service that Mr. Granger says a one-inch line that services the first dwelling. Down here, 
Absolutely. Yeah, and this would be this where he was proposing to put the sewer straight across the line. Or just go and show me back here. Back here, there's a sewer trunk that he could do one function and pump out to So. <coughs> And again, if the sewer um, commissioners decided to allow that, I mean, I'm, I'm here to give you my recommendation, um, there would be very strict guidelines that he would have to follow, such as definite flowable fill. The problem, um, that's not my big problem, the flowable fill. My big problem is if something happens, it's owned by Mr. Evangelista, an easement, and he would have the right to go into repair. Okay. I think it's, uh, again, I think it's, very messy to go this way for the town, to go through. I think that's called Gleason Square, correct? Yeah. Yes. To go through the square and to get easements. When there is a way, I think, I think if there was no way, I would I really uh, try to work this out because, you know, he's building these, you know, nice condominiums over here. And it's, you know, if there was no way to get sewer, I would, I'm sure you would even look at it different. If there was no possible if there was no way, way to but get there, certainly I'd be with you and just say there is no option because the only other option, if you didn't have the trunk behind you and you didn't have a viable source in front of you, would be private septic. Just to let you know, there's a natural gas line that runs right exactly on the road edge past the lots. I mean, literally, it's it's at the edge of pavement, so there may be a need. We're hoping not to have to disturb any pavement to get the natural gas line, but if you can see. You'll see there's three black marks on the page there. There's a little box there that shows the natural gas line. The one in the middle of the other two bigger black boxes. Yeah, that, so that that would that that's off. We didn't do that. Pavement. Then would have to do you know would have to do propane gas to the units instead of going maybe two or three feet to get the gas line back to the properties. But you have not filed for that permit yet, right? And we have. And that's again. That's outside of the purview of this. That's something different. Well, so I don't know. I, I, this is all new to me. I've been opening the roads here for 20 years, and this is the first time I've had an issue opening the road. And I understand Gary's thoughts here. And you can look at every patch I've ever made down on the road, and we stand behind it. And I don't think I've ever had a call back on any time I've opened the road in the town of West Wilson and closed it. But again, if we, I mean, we may don't you know, open, make it to a three foot cut in that road there to get the gas lines into the, into the eight units we're, we're proposing that. Again, Joe, just so you know, just not to be misunderstood, I, this is the first time I'm hearing of, of the actual gas. Yeah, I understand. But the other one is not, and I'm not, certainly not complaining okay. about any of the patches you've done. What I'm worried about is, yeah. a, is a permanent easement to you right across yeah. all of this, which okay. you'd have an easement and so, have the right to go. So, so I guess here's what I'm looking for today, if possible, from the board. Is that we can go backwards into the into the easement it's going to have to be pumped i mean obviously it's 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 uh, it's not a gravity feed system it's not ideal um but if, you know we're looking to go in that same trench and get our water and be allowed to go just be able to go in say four feet at the road edge and uh and we'll flow we'll fill it and put it back to get the gas line which is probably three and a half or four feet deep into the road into the road and you have have they gone out and marked that the, um, the gas company we have we have not had the, I, I just got the call last week to request the gas services oh, okay that's so I have to, okay so i haven't seen anything okay. that, that would have to be yeah again that's not i understand that's a big concern for you but yeah. that's outside of where all, all we're concerned with right now is the sewer because we're the sewer commissioners that's well, gary and building a, inspector what a select them, don't you vote on the on the on the waiver to to enter the road or is that a sore no that's board? not that's not a board of selectmen uh to would not be voting on a waiver to enter the road for uh, gas line. So water would control that. Mike would control that. No, who would? Uh, yeah, who? Uh, Gary, who, who? That would come into the purview of the DPW for the gas. To to they open the road them. within the out within the five years. It's up to you to make that decision. Yes. It doesn't come back in front of us. No, it go. It would go to you, such as the sewer and water commissioners. I would make I would make that decision whether they could go in there or not, and and also uh, set the guidelines for how it had to be done. But I have not seen anything on that, and I'm not I really don't know the location of the tie-in. It would be uh, I assume it would be EverSource that would come to me and approach me over that. Yeah. And I have not been approached, so I can't I can't really address it at this time. Any any discussion on further discussion on the sewer? We have a motion on the sewer. Hearing none, we will pass over the request. Uh, 
under other. Do you have anything else? I do not, sir. Uh, I'll be only going to give you some updates and let you know that um, the pave obviously is complete on Hosmer and Keys, and the crews have been down there filling the shoulders, um, aprons, low spots, uh, catch basin repair, so on and so forth. I'm very, with the ha very happy with the work the paper did and also the work that the DPW did down there, the, jet, the crew down there. Also, our uh, two of our trucks, um, as you know, the uh, past the town meeting for the new bodies and controls, one truck has been completely stripped and sent up to, um, to Madigan to have that installed, the stainless body. And the other is in the process it has been stripped, but now it, it's at the point of replacing old lines, sanding, grinding, so on and so forth. I'm very, I'm very happy to see that the, the two guys and, and others that have helped them have taken those bodies off and put that work into that. So they'll, you know, they're not just sending a, a cabin chassis up there and mounting a body on a rusty frame. So I'm very happy. I just wanted to, I would let you know that, that I'm, uh, uh, I'm happy with the progress. I'm happy with the work that the crew does. Um, and I'm also, uh, Happy that uh, July 4th of over, is over and winter's on its way. <laughs> winter, starts in, winter starts on July 5th in my book. Did, uh, I guess there was a, a memo that you might have missed in regards to surplus property. I, I did see that. Okay. Um, Do you I not really, have anything for this round? Uh, is, what was the deadline? I apologize. I don't have the deadline. I did talk to the fire chief about it the other day because I'll have those three bodies. But as you know, and, and most people know, they are rust buckets, but they're... You know, there's certainly scrap value, but they, um, I have not sent them to, uh, to Nancy as surplus. Okay. Well, we could add it on right now. Could we add it on now? Of course you, we could. Do you want to do that right now? Or we, we certainly can. We, we'll have no need for them so other, than, other than scrap value. Three? So there's three, three bodies. What are the bodies you're talking? The sander bodies. For the trucks. <laughs> and do you, anything else you can think of? Oh, that's it for now. <laughs> uh, no, no, that's really fine. No. We can do it the next. No, I can. I'll, I'll double check that when I get back to me to see what the dates. I don't know if that's expired or not. That's fine. And one other thing, we had a discussion about um, the water. So the townspeople know if you have a, a little late for this, but if you have a swimming pool, you can call the water department. They will shut off your sewer meter so that you can fill your pool. Then they'll turn the sewer meter back on. It costs about thirty dollars to have them do the two reads. But if you have to fill a whole swimming pool, it's going to save you a lot of money in sewer fees. So that is an option if you're okay. just a one-time uh, pool fill. That would be helpful. Okay, thank you. Can I ask a couple no. of questions? Uh, is there any update on Lee Street, the upper Lee Street? Lee Street, um, uh, and you and I have talked many times about Lee Street, um, and that's Malone and McBroom that are doing the engineering work on Lee Street. Their biggest um, function in town or pro project to get out of the way, if you will, was the Crescent Street sidewalk. Uh, obviously, I've been in, in meetings with Nancy and the, the gentlemen, the engineers over that, and have asked the question uh, at our last meeting when that situation was going to be taken care of. And that's what they stated. I don't know if you remember that, that they just wanted to get the Crescent Street uh, paperwork out, the bids in, and then they're jumping on Lee Street, which a certain amount of money, I think it was $20,000, was um, already approved for that. Um, they had some different ideas of where they want to go with the drainage, uh, very costly, so I threw some of my ideas at them, and that's the way we hope to go, but that is the next, next project to be taken care of. Apart from the Lee and the uh, Osmer, are we going to pave any other roads? Lee? Lee? I'm sorry, Keys and Osmer. Keys and Osmer, well, I, have, I did talk to um, um, the stated engineer, um, asked him for my new ledger. I know the governor did sign the bill and our it is extra money's coming in, so I just have to make sure that everything's in order and the balances are good and do my estimating. So I know that you know you, uh, the DPW is cutting all the overgrown scrubs along the roads. There are some of the signs, like the stop sign, so particularly in the Worcester streets when you want to get, get you know, from the side seats to coming into the Worcester streets. Those are all like a very dangerous intersections. Is there a, can you consider cutting all Well, we are considering, we do send them out depending on the weather and what else the crews are doing. But it's a nice um, weather. I mean, this is a time of year actually, um, and I'm not, I'm not complaining. I certainly thank them for doing that. Most, most of the gentlemen try to take their vacations when they can because they can't take it in the winter. So uh, we are putting them out there with the over the rails and doing the, and doing the brush cutting. I have talked to, um, to others about the signage. I see that problem. If there's something like just me carrying a pair of loppers around on my truck, I'm certainly glad to take care of that, um, do what I can with the signs, because they do have to be 
um, in Clearview. Yeah. So uh, it, it's on the list, Raj, um, um, we'll take care of it. And also uh, on the list that I know, I know, Mr. Hatley, I don't know if you brought it up first, but was the stop sign on Goodale that wasn't blinking anymore? I finally got the battery. The battery should be in, if not the end of this week, the beginning of next week. So it's a $75 battery, and um, I have to go up, or somebody has to go up. Um, maybe I'll do it. Um, and drill out the rivets, replace the battery, and place the plate on again. And also, down in the um, in the Woodland Prospect area, down at Pinecroft, um, was a hit and run for one of those same stop signs. So I did order that, and that should be in at the same time. It's a very costly, uh, uh, hopefully, we can, I don't know, Nancy, if we can claim that through insurance. We can. But I put those on my supplemental insurance, okay, so you good. send me. Oh, okay, good. Sure. It's, no, about, I, it's about an yeah. $1,100 item for one of those signs. So anyway, those, those are ordered and will be replaced. <coughs> Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Next item is consider amending the membership requirement for the PEG board. The recommendation is to reduce membership from seven to five by eliminating the school, sports, and senior designee and replacing with another resident slot. Chris, you want to speak to that? Yeah, it's just, you know, we're not getting a lot of interest from those groups. Now, just because we went to a resident, that resident could be one of those people, but we didn't, we're not getting a lot of interest. I don't think we've ever really had a school person on it, so um, I don't see why it would hurt. Make a motion to approve. Second. Any further discussion? So now it, everyone is going to be a resident? Well, everybody was always a resident. Resident, yeah. Yeah, they're always so residents. So the designation is gone now? Okay. But, I mean, I personally would still like to see somebody maybe senior connected, but um, putting it on under that only, it yeah. limits us to just those five people that might be interested in town. You know. Any further discussion? And the only thing I would add to this is I would, if we find lots of interest, I would ask the PEG board to come back and we'll talk about changing this again. To, to something, but as of now, for the last year, we have not got that type of interest. So, what are we doing now? We are reducing the number of people in that board. Yes, that five idea? people. From seven, seven to five. One, Se two, right, three. seven to five, oh, okay. and the, all the three are gone instead of three. Be, yes. We are going to be one. Yes. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Concurrence on the hiring of Karen Hennessy to the 15 hour a week administrative assessor position effective August 5th, 2019, at a rate of $18.07 an hour. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Consider voting to sign a three year employment contract with Fire Chief. Thomas Welsh. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Uh, consider a request from the Parks Facilities Committee for the board to send letters to Senator Chandler and Representative O'Day asking them to make a push for the $5 million bond bill funding for the Goodale Park project and for the board to consider making a formal request of the Parks Commission <coughs> to send letters as well. Um, I'll speak to this. We had a, a Parks Facilities meeting um, last week, earlier this week. Uh, this is one of the things we discussed and it was suggested um, that we revisit this issue and uh, ask our representative and our senator to uh, try to get, get the funds secured. The Parks Facilities Committee is going to uh, send the same letter we voted uh, as the Parks Facilities Committee to send the same letter and ask that the Board of Selectmen make a formal request to the uh, Parks Commissioners and I, I don't see them having any issue doing it but we just wanted it to be a, a formal request from the Board. So second, I, the only thing is about the formal request from us, I mean I have no problem but there are two Board members, Parks Commission members on that, 
I don't know why it would have to come from us. It doesn't have to. Yeah, I mean, I have no problem sending state rep, but I just, I don't foresee why we should get in the middle of asking them. Why would, why wouldn't, why wouldn't they want to send that, that we need to ask I, them? Yeah. <laughs> that's, just, <laughs> that's just a vote yeah. that was taken. Yeah, so, yeah, I, I don't, whatever. I, they're not going to say no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and they have two members on the Parks Facility Committee, too, so. so. All right, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. So what's this formal request? Does Nancy write a letter to them? Yes. Or just there's, letters in your, letter. there's letters in your agenda, and actually in the signature file, I prepared letters for the um, suggested letters for the Parks Facility Committee and for the Parks Commission that I will forward to them. Um, the next item uh, is uh, consider changing the start time for, uh, it says selectmen's fest meetings. I, I wanted it on here for, for selectmen's meetings. I don't want to just unilaterally change it. Uh, I wanted to make sure everybody on the board doesn't have any issues starting the meetings at six in lieu of seven uh, work issues or other issues that they wouldn't be able to make a six o'clock meeting on a regular basis versus a seven o'clock meeting. Is there anybody that has an issue with that? The only question I'd have is, so when we have meetings before the meeting, which we have, it seems like it happens more and more, executive sessions, are those going to be like five and no, five? No, I think the, the meeting would still start at six. It's just that the meeting, you know, the executive session and the meeting before the meeting things will still happen first. Yeah, I, I mean, we've had it on seven. Is there a reason why we, you want to change? Or? Uh, just because the makeup of the board, I think we could all, you know, rather, I'd rather get home at eight ish than nine ish or nine thirty ish uh, on, on a school night. Yeah, so because my biggest concern is the. the the early meetings, then yeah, we're, I, we're moving into five now. I mean, we can always, I mean, we can, it's not set in stone, whatever time we start. But it's nice to, for the people to know, the residents know that the Board of Selectmen, most meetings do start at seven, so the people know. Right. That might be interested in watching. And, so and that's why I, I, I didn't want, I wanted to have a conversation about this and say, you know, I, I'd like to change it to six, um, and as long as everybody can make it, if we run into issues where, hey, it's not working because, we need to have all these pre-Board of Selectmen meetings. We could always change it back, but I mean, if we have an executive session starting, like today we started at six, we had an executive session. Yeah, but we can still keep the executive session up. Even at if six. we start a meeting, yeah, six. Right. So, well, in the past, most of our executive sessions used to be after the meeting. That, that changed, we slowly changed to before the meetings. And if you call, the reason we did that is because if we have town council in, rather than have town council sit around and pay them, we right. would have the executive session first to make better use of. But we, yeah, but then we just, then we just made it right. along. Yeah. Okay, so we try, moving forward, we'll try, when we do the agendas, I'm going to put them out at six. If it doesn't work, we can always revisit it. Uh, and then it, FISP is on there. Uh, do you, uh, I have no problem with that. The, the problem with the FISP is I know Ray Burkall would never be able to make another yeah, meeting. That's right. We'll, we'll talk to him before we, uh, at the next meeting. Okay. Before I mean, we do anything permanent. The FISP isn't going to have that many meetings. Exactly. Moving, you know. yeah. Well, I mean, I guess the question I'll have, so if one member doesn't like it, are we not going to change it? Yeah. That's a good point. Uh, yeah. like on this the point, he, he, Ray would just have to get off the committee. He would never be able to make a meeting. Uh, and that's, uh, if, put it this way, if, if there was a member on here, John said, look, I can't get there till 7 o'clock. I would say, let's keep the meeting at 7. I, 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 this board, as it's currently constituted, I know we can all make it for 6 o'clock. Well, I, I asked the question. It's apparent now we can all make it for 6 o'clock. And, you know, it's always been 7. I wanted to have the – I didn't want to unilaterally say we're doing it at 6 now. I wanted to make sure everybody was okay with it because it's not fair to all of a sudden say one, one member of the Board of Selectmen is going to be an hour late for the meeting. Or, or the member of the FISC meeting. We'll bring it up in the next FISC meeting. Okay. Consider request from the water district to waive, Boylson. from the Boylston water district, to waive the building permit fee for their upcoming water storage replacement project on the Boylston, West Boylston town line. Chris, I know Matt spoke to you. I spoke to him as well. Do you want to? I don't, I don't know much detail about it. They, somebody from the Water Commission in Boylston brought it up, but I think, I think more the question now is how they're on West Boylston land. Do they have an easement to be on West Boylston land? That I don't know. <laughs> and that's, I, and then th those are all questions now that have come up. 
to me more than if we should be waiving their fees. Well, I can speak to the fee piece. I can't speak to why they're on West Boylston lands. I did speak to uh, Matt Rice, he's a water commissioner, and he verified that this went out to bid that the uh, town of Boylston is responsible for any permitting fees. It is not on the contractor. That's how the bid was written. Um, I said to him that I, that I would be recommending that if we do approve the waiver of the fees, that any actual cost associated with, the, with the, if we have to do inspections or if we have to pay someone to do an inspection, that we would expect West, well, we would expect Boylston to pay for that. Um, but I do know that the fees <coughs> are going to be borne by the the West Boylston, uh, the Boylston Water District, not the contractor. If we decide to do this. Well, that really that doesn't matter if it's by the contractor the contract would be up a little well, bit well no they've already got the bids right but i mean if they went out to bid and they said the contract is to pay the fees they, right, would, they would indirectly pay it either but way. if they went out to bid and the, and the contractor was responsible for the fees i would not be personally i wouldn't want to waive the fees because that's not coming out of the that's coming out of the profit of the contractor it's not coming out of the, our neighbors pockets yeah but again you know the question first question is you know it's our response to land. So okay. how the spoil boils and can come and can they come and uh, build their... Uh, it's already there. They're replacing the existing tank. Oh. So this tank already exists on West So, so again, you know, if, even if they replace it, they should go to the planning board, right? I, no. I don't know. I, yes. I, it's just any maintenance. Other, any it's just maintenance, so, uh, It's just maintenance. Why would they need fees to do maintenance on it? Why would they need building fees to yeah, It's a $1.2 million project. It's, yeah. <clears throat> it's just like they're replacing something, but it's more of a repair. Yeah, I don't think you have to go to the planning board so to. Uh, any of the, the projects, you know, any of the projects in town, anyone, you know, if they do any project, they go to the planning board. How can you bypass the planning? I don't know. If, I, if you tear down a house and build another house on the same property, you don't have to go to the planning board. No, that's a the house is a different building. Inspector. I mean, a building. If you do yeah, a commercial you building. You have to go to the building inspector, right? The building inspector, yeah. Yeah. Not the planning board. No, but this is a public project. This is a different project. This is not an individual home. I, d I don't know, but I'm just uh, saying. Can, Nancy, can we look into that? Can, we certainly can. Just. Yeah. Make sure that they don't need, Dave, you, hold on a second. Make sure that everything they need to do, absent this, the, the fee is a totally different thing. And, and, and I did check with the building inspector about the fee, and he knows it would be um, how long does it take him to do the plan review, whatever it is. And I said to him, we would pay for our inspectors, those types of fees. The only thing they wouldn't pay is the fee for the permit, but we would cover our costs. And we did look into this. Um, I checked with the town clerk because it seemed a little odd. Usually if you build, you would get an easement, and she couldn't find anything. Um, but Mr. Femi is here, and it, this was discussed um, by the planning board, so he may be able to shed some light. This came about in September of last year, and um, Bentley was here, and then nothing, I guess nothing was done. And then back in October of last year, they sent, Boylston sent an email, and Chris Lund had made a, a comment about it, um, stating that um, the initial, his initial impression after looking at the town bylaws was that a site plan review would not be required for this project, but he asked that we provide the attached request so that a formal determination could be made. Um, I reached out to um, yeah, sign, yeah. Chris Olson, who was the chair of the ZBA, because they thought they had to get a, a, a special permit from us. He didn't think so. I sent all the emails to Nancy. Um, also, Vinny and Canale from Planning Board got involved in this. Um, basically, I talked to Mike Tugney today um, to ask him. He doesn't know about any easements. I asked him roughly, when do you think that that tank was built? He said probably back in the 40s or 50s. And more than likely, back in those days, everything was done by, you know, a handshake and a man's word. So it was probably built that way. And according to what, I, what they sent us, or what they sent was, is that they're not going to, they, 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 it's going to stay in the same place. It's just that it's going to be just 
you know, a brand new building, they're gonna tear down the old one and build a new one, basically. Um, it's kind of surprising that this all came up now. I mean, here it is almost a year later. I thought that this was already resolved, but Nancy sent me a, a thing this, morning, this afternoon, and I made a couple of phone calls, and that was the information that I got from uh, Mr. Cosby. So for our purposes, I'd like to, let's assume that all the legalities are handled by the planning board, the PBA, the building inspector, and, and they have the okay to do this project. I'd like to discuss just the permit fee and not all of the other things because the, the ZBA the, the, and the planning board may or may not need to do a review but the building inspector is certainly going to need to sign off on it. So assuming that those are done. How much is the, how much are we talking? Well, it all depend on how many inspectors have to go out. No, how much is just this fee we're waiving? Not the cost of all the, oh, the inspectors because they're going to pay those. All we're waiving is that. Is it, what is it? I think the new, I believe the commercial fee is $300 mm -hmm. and it's $250 for um, the electrical, which is three inspections, and 250 for plumbing, and that's three inspections. But, but just to be clarified, that 250 covers those three inspections, so they're still going to pay when we pay that person to go out. Yes. Yes. So they just want to wait the initial fee of if we usually charge like a... Uh, yeah, that's what I'm trying to figure yeah. out. So not it, much. It's usually ten dollars a thousand. Residential is ten dollars a thousand. I don't know what yes. it is for a commercial or something like this. Yeah, I think we need to find out you know, exactly how much fees before. I, I would be I would be comfortable. I would still make a that we waive the fees because I don't think we, fees would be on the website. But Boylston, we would want to. Yeah, I, I wouldn't want to charge them. I would assume they do the same for us if we had the same situation. Oh. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I just, I mean, if there was someone else in front of us asking us to waive fees, I think the first question would say is, how much are we waiving? I mean, I think that's a fair question. I mean, is it $2,000, $3,000? And it's still the cost occurred by the building department, they're still going to pay. So that two fifty dollars for three visits could still be two fifty dollars because you have to pay the inspector each time to go out. So as long as we're clear on what what we're waiving yeah we're, we're waiving the, just the initial there's a one-time fee. fee but we're, we're going to cover the cost the of the fees. inspectors we're not waiving the inspection fees at all correct is and it? i mean our now my other question is is then do we if they have an inspector a, a west boils the boylston inspector is looking at the project do we have to have boylston and west boylston both town agencies sign off on do we have to sign off on our third of the project that's in West Boylston, or is the inspector that's going to be doing the Boylston inspections capable of covering us? I don't know the answer to that. Well, usually on a uh, commercial project, is you have a uh, clear for the works or something like that that would do the inspection. You have one one town, who, usually one town would do the inspection. I, I can't see so, how... So I don't know that would. we're going to... There might not be any need for inspectors on our part. How do we, I don't, know I, don't the, know. I don't know the answer either, but. It says in the email that the portion where the new water tank will be constructed is located within the town of West Boylston's town boundary. So it, wouldn't, it would be West Boylston doing but the inspectors. No, a portion of the tank is in. Is in <laughs> no, it, it, the whole tank is in? I thought, it just, look at, I thought I read a portion. I was looking at the map. It's hard to tell from the map, though. Second paragraph in the e in the email. Yeah, it says the, the, the tank is located at the end of Cutler Road is divided by the West Boylston Boylston town line. Keep going. Okay. How much is the project going to cost? Oh, so okay. So the whole thing might be in our is in our town. It is. Ten dollars per thousand. It's hundred thousand. No, that's ten thousand. I don't think this, uh, I would assume there's not an urgency to do this. We could get what the actual fee is going to be, would be, and, and revisit this. Do you know what the timeline for this project is? Well, it's been, <laughs> they've been talking about it well, since. Well, uh, when are they planning on starting? <clears throat> so I'm just looking at the building permit fees. It says industrial, 200 plus $10 per thousand valuation. So 
The property's valued at 1.2. 1. 1. That's 10. Project. So that's 12,000 volts. Yeah. So we're waiving 12,000 volts. We need to clarify. I know. I know. Back in the forties, they did it by a handshake. But I'm wondering about liability today. That property's on our town. And and like I said, I, I think we the the what before us is do we want to waive the fee? Whether the project's going to move forward and the whole liability issue, the building inspector, the planning board, the ZBA may or may not get involved in that to say, hey, wait a second, you don't have an easement, you don't have this, this project may, the brakes may be put on this project because of that. I don't think any of those groups handle the easement but us. So we need to, we need to clarify the easement and, section. Okay, so, and again, if there's no we easement. We've got to clean that up. We have to clean yeah, the easement it, up. I, yeah, if they don't have an easement, you know. Right, we've got to just make it right now. You know, this is our opportunity. And, and I don't have any issue saying, hey, we want to make the easement right, and we can table this and, and look, at every, look at it again once we get all the ducks in a row to make sure that everything is done legally and not the old boy system. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm okay with that. I mean, and then we, maybe we can also ask the building inspector to tell us what this, what we're actually waiving, right. the amount of money. Right. If it's ten, twelve, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000, whatever it may be. Okay, so we'll, we'll table that and we'll move on. I know, no, Pat, if you saw that note, there was somebody here. Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah, why don't we, look, we can skip forward to that. Um, we're going to skip forward uh, under appointments and resignations. Uh, we're going to do the concurrence on the appointment of Matthew Dewar to the PEG board, effective August 2nd, 2019, for term to expire June 30th, 2019. You want to come on up? Matthew, correct? Yes. Yes, you can take a seat right My name is Matthew Duar. That's me. I'm currently serving in the Massachusetts National Guard. I'm interested in serving my town. I went to Aspect Regional Vocational High School for Business Technology. Uh, I'm studying political science. Um, I studied at UMass Boston, did ROTC, and studied political science there. I had to go to basic training in AIT. This past winter, in the spring, I just got back and now I'm studying at Quinn State and transferring over to Worcester State to uh, study political science again. Okay. Questions of the board? No. What made you decide uh, PEG board? PEG board, I went in and I was interested in Parks Commission at first. Um, I'm just interested in creating new programs for Parks and Rec. Uh, just bringing more summer, summer programs, getting interest in the community, um, making the town more beautiful, whatnot. Um, and then I went into the office and Nancy recommended PEP board. I read into the description and I would like to do that. Um, programming, getting equipment, whatnot, and I found out it was a good match. I have one more question. What guard unit again? Uh, 3126 Aviation Battalion. You're out west. Yes. Uh, uh, Cape. Oh, okay. Cape uh, Edwards. We'll make a motion to approve. Second. Any further discussion? Yeah, I do. Do you have enough time to spend on the board? What was that? Do we have time to attend the meetings? Eh? Absolutely. Yep. So you won't be called for the National Guard? No. Not. Right. Well, even if it was, you don't know. Let's keep your fingers crossed yeah, that it's not. Yeah, we hope not. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So move. Thank you for yeah, volunteering. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And you'll be uh, you'll be notified when we have a meeting. Thank you. Yep. Thanks. Uh, thank you. I lost track of the agenda. I consider voting to recognize the acceptance of the following donations for the bandstand committee and to approve expenditure of these funds uh, for general purposes. $200 from the Bignali family, $171.98, free will donations to July 14th concert, and $198 free will donations to July 7th concert. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. 
uh, public hearing on uh, updates to the gateway sign policy. Um, yeah. well, we do. read the news. Read the thing. Oh, public notice is hereby giving that in conformity with the requirements of the general bylaws of the town of West Boston, Article 23, public hearing in notice that the Board of Selectmen will meet on Thursday, August 1st, 2019, at 7.30 p.m. for the purpose of considering amendments to policy L15 policy on gateway sign. The meeting will be held in the Selectman's meeting room in Town Hall 140 Worcester Street, West Wilson, Mass. Additional information, please contact the Office of Board of Selectmen. Pat Crowley, Chairman. Okay, um, John, this is your, your thing. You want to go over the changes? Well, one of the changes we're going to do on the back of the signs leaving town, when I even get some advertisers, at the front of the signs we get $250 Three month period. The back of sign we're going to try to charge 150, so people can so we can get on both sides coming in because the back is just blank right now. Coming and going. Coming and going, and it's actually been doing really well. We've had a lot of interest in people in that. In the uh, I know if the new sign on there looks great, and I know the man is very happy with the response they've gotten from us. So why and not 250? Huh? Why not 250? Why 150? Not as, vis not, not, as visible, not, like, not as visible. Not as visible as the. Yeah. I, I would also say that if if one if one of the signs aren't visible at all in the back where where it ends up going, yeah. we're not going to put it on the list. Right. right. So exactly. this is on the one forty route. route. The both the both is, we have two signs now. Right. Um, the route twelve one is very visible yeah. in the right. back. I, the one forty one I don't. It's visible too. You know when yeah. people are leaving. Pretty good. Yeah. But we have other signs too. This will this will go right. if as we get more signs, this will apply but to if that. If we find one that has curious. no visibility, we won't put it on the internet. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just curious, you know, on the other side two fifty, this side is one fifty, you know, hundred dollar difference. It's like the front cover and the back cover. Yeah, exactly. Right. Of the Prime <laughs> advertising space, right? In, in the uh, you know, we're hoping to get enough money to pay some for third sign, so you that know, was uh, that was one of our uh, changes. I had, I had, I, what else was the oddly one? enough, I still have the notes from the meeting. Um, we also talked about adding locations into the into the policy. Yes. Are, are just adding, or was that just adding new locations? Well, we already added about how uh, we can't have a, uh, a restaurant on Route 12. Yeah, Route 12. That, we added that in. We had, we had that in before. Right. So there's no, and then the other thing was, uh, did we want to put something in the policy in regards to plantings? I know we talked about it and I noted it, but <coughs> uh, line number five. Does it say it's mandatory? Or does it say yeah, it just says we uh, asked them to do wishes it. to do basic landscaping. They must discuss their plans with the town DPW director. Doesn't it's say they must. Yeah, so I, I that's the other note I had. I don't yeah. know again um, if, if we if I don't recall what the what we finally decided, but I know I have a note. On. We would like to ask them to uh, you know volunteer to keep the grounds like the one in Route Twelve was great, and uh, maybe we can ask them. I don't know, can we put that as the, uh, why not? But see, the problem is, though, if you have somebody on both sides of the sign, who's going to maintain it? It says the, the roof was adopted the front. Okay. In the, that, in the new policy. Yeah. That, that, that was added. That's what we thought. Yeah. So are those the only those changes? Are the only, so the only two changes with those two, Nancy? Yes, if, if you look um, under what are we doing in the second paragraph, um, I highlighted the economic development task force does not allow any restaurants to advertise on the sign located on the northbound side of Route 12 coming into West Boylston as the sign is located in between existing West Boylston restaurants. Right. Okay. So those are the only two changes. And then uh, Nancy, on the third line from the bottom, it says in between existing, the, mm -hmm. the, the, at a space. Okay. Any, any other discussion from the board? Anybody from the public have anything? Make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So are we sure that the backside, I'm thinking of this now, the rule was supposed to be they take that piece off and have the 
the sign painted on it. That's not what's happened, right? People have made signs and they're, they're, being, they're bolting it somehow to the current. Correct. As long as it's not any bigger than the existing okay. piece. So that's going to be the same with the back. Yeah. They're going to have to build something right. and have it attached somehow. Correct. The, one of the things I'm, I'm, I'm thinking is, you know, so when you are coming from uh, Boylston, so that's the front side, right? Yeah. So if somebody is maintaining all the flowers and the other things at the bottom, why they have to go on the back side, maintain that area? No, I think the policy says just policy the says the over on the front. Yeah. Maintain yeah. on the back too. Because it's, it's not a very big. It's not a very. It's not. Yeah, but still, you know, they may think, you know, the the, the people who are advertiser advertise on the side, they should maintain that side of the. Well, you can't have somebody to uh, leave the lines on one side and roses on the other side, or something like that. I mean, can't the lines. <laughs> <laughs> you think about it. <laughs> you think about it. <laughs> so if it is, <laughs> well, we have adopted the front side of the sign wishes to do basic. Okay. Oh, so we're not making it. They, the person doesn't have to do anything. It's, it's no. Right, but we just ask them to do it. It comes out every. Uh, comes up for us. Has the one on <coughs> 140 been? Has there been any? No, not yet. No landscape. No. Okay, so do we have a motion to accept the amended policy? So moved. Second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. <coughs> Next is the Another public hearing day. on uh, adopting a policy on procuring quotes for the town, uh, from town businesses. Public notice is hereby given in conformity with the requirements of the general bylaws of the Town of West Bowles in Article 23 public hearing and notice that the Board of Selectmen will meet Thursday, August 1st at 7.40 p.m. for the purpose of considering adopting L25 <coughs> policy and procuring quotes for the town businesses. The meeting will be held in Selectmen's meeting room 140 Worcester Street, West Bowles. Okay, so this is something I had asked. Basically, what the policy says is if there's a, a business in West Boylston that is offering the services that the town needs, uh, we will solicit a quote from them. And basically, the rest of it says if they're the lowest qualified bidder, we will go with them. Um, it doesn't force us to, to accept the bid uh, from anybody in town. It's just saying that we will solicit bids from people in town because if we're going to be spending taxpayers' dollars on the town, I personally would like to see it go to town businesses if they are competitive. That's a great idea. Yeah, so this is small, below certain amount if we're just calling, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. so if, yeah. Yeah, the, you know, it, if something goes in the paper and says that's, give bids, this is only if we're calling right. to, to build a table or something and mm -hmm. there's a carpenter in town. Yeah. But so, so for instance, that situation, there might be 20 plumbers in town and 10 carpenters. What do we, do we, do we expect that whoever's looking for that to reach out to each one of them? I mean, it, it you only need three. Right. Well, then. How do you notify to the people? Yeah, I'm just saying, how do we, you know, yeah, sure, I, there's a different story if the, there's only one guy in town that does this, but. And, and, and it's, that's a good point. The policy, as it's written, says that the municipal department shall request a quote from that town business. So if there's eight plumbers in town. No, Can we just set up a simple email that has all the plumbers on it and all the electricians, and when we send something out, email all of them, give them a certain amount of time to come back? Something that's as simple as that. Whatever the department's doing, it says. I just think I need a sink put in, and it goes out to all the the, the plumbers in town. I know we only need three, but I'm just because it would be hard. I mean, honestly, many of the jobs we have are very small jobs. That's what I mean. Um, and most of the people in town do use um, electricians and plumbers in town. Um, so, but this um, is different now. This is putting it. This is requiring the direct the person that's right. looking for it to contact all people in town that do that job. So this is, now it was just open, he could just say, uh, call a sign. You know, I'm just using that for an example. Right. You know, we call them. Mm -hmm. But if but there's, and there's two, so, you know, nine. Or if there's carpenters, do we have lists of every carpenter? Do we have to contact every one of them? So do we wanna say, uh, change this to, we could make the policy just say, if there are businesses in town, we will request <coughs> from at least one 
instead of saying all. Can we send it out to the businesses and say if you're interested in us contacting you to give us your contact information, you know what I'm saying? Because there might be some people that might not even, you know, they might be so busy that they don't have time for small projects. Yeah, but this is, if we're doing a policy. I know, that's what I'm 10 years from now, if we're in a, like we were 10 years ago, everybody's gonna want that small job. Right. Just to keep them busy. So we, we you know, in today's economy, well, that's what I was saying. I, yeah, I think we need to email everybody then. You know, make a email for plumbers, an email for carpenters, an email. But the other thing too is, um, for parts and stuff like that. We always, I always tried to keep it in town when I could as far as buying like through West Boyles and Auto Parts, whatever, if it was cheaper money or, mm -hmm. you know, usually, and when you, if you're coming close to prices, if you're sending somebody out to get it, it's definitely cheaper to keep it local. And a lot of times they'd open up all hours of the night for us too. So I know they, a lot of the taxpayers go, you know, bend over to help us out. So I mean, I think we have to have something that contacts them all. If we're gonna do it, we gotta touch base with them then leave it up to them to get back to us, leave a certain amount of time. Here's the project we have. You know, make it easy for everybody to go. If you're looking for a carpenter, here's a list of carpenters in town, just fill out this on the email and shoot it out to them and see what they say. I mean. It's, it's, it's becoming, it, it's a lot of work for the direct, the person looking for yeah. this project. I, I, I think it should be uh, shell, at least one, something like that. And we can do one of two things. If we go with Mike's route, we can send a, 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 a Everybody has to have a license, so we use that license database to send a blanket email once a year to, to, to everybody that's licensed that says, do you want to be added to the plumber, carpenter there's list? No, there's no license for a carpenter, so we, we wouldn't be able to give, we don't give licenses to carpenters. No plumbers. And we don't give license to plumbers or electricians, locally. There's yeah. a state board yeah. that does that. Well, I don't know if we could get that list, but. I, I don't, I don't make, make it, but I just want to, now it's a policy, so we're required, we we're, mandating our, we're mandating our directors to do this now. Do so we want us to go with, then we say, at least one. Shall, if there, if there, should there be businesses in town who offer the goods and services, the municipal department, municipal department shall request a quote from at least one town business. What what's happening now? Are we not There's, entertaining any response in the people? I I would say that we most likely are doing this anyway. Yeah. Because then why we, do we need a policy on that? It's because if to, you are to, doing it to ensure that it it, it, it is done. Right. Yeah, but this complicates complications. No, really, it's good for the town because it's like, good the, like town. the people that live in town. They work in town, pay taxes in town, so, so you, want, you want them to reimburse yeah. in your town? No, I'm, I'm right. totally agree. I'm not against it. I'm, uh, I'm uh, saying, you know, one person. Who so is yeah, that one So person? now we have the policy in place, one and person. someone's going to say, geez, I'm an electrician it's a, it's a in town. Yeah. I've never got a call from the town asking me for, yeah. to do work. Yeah. Which one person? According to the policy, it would be up to whoever's making the, the request has to pick uh, at least one town vendor that offers that service. I mean, right now, there's no policy, and Electrician A is getting all the calls from town because he's the one who has always responded, but Electrician B never got a call. No, to tell you the truth, we used to have a list, Nance. Didn't we have, like, an electrician that we knew would give us this price <clears throat> years ago? We had Many years ago, we yeah. sent out... It was under Paul Guida. We sent out for an electrician. Oh, wow. oh. Right. It was under the bids. We used to yeah, bid it. it was and it was just a general. Goods and service bid, right. Yes. So a local guy could say, I'm willing to do this work for this, for this amount of money or whatever right. the case. 20, yeah. But I, I think that was a long time ago. I thought it was past Paul Guida, because I, I can recall. No, it was Paul Guida's was a, era. We used to call one gentleman, at the town electrician, because he was always called in, and that was only four or five years ago. Well, I think we've bid it out a couple times, but we yeah. haven't had a lot of response while no. business was good. A lot of them just go to That's the That's Michael's the exactly dip. right. Yeah, and I the, think we've bid it out a lot of times, and, and you know, sometimes one electrician will say, I'm willing to do it, and it was never really turned out to be you know, a bunch of people. That's a problem. I think the idea is a good idea still. I think we should try to reach out. The head of the department should try to reach out to one was business. At least one. 
I think that's still good. If there's three people in town that do the same thing, <coughs> reach out to three of them. You have to get three bids anyhow, right? Don't you need it? Well, not on something small. No, if but I have, yeah, right, you're right. You know, yeah. If I have, a, if a my toilet's needed. running, I'm going to call yeah. my plumber that I usually call, and he's going to yeah. come and fix the toilet. That's the other thing that we might, we might be getting into now. Somebody may have good relationships with someone they've been dealing with for a long time, but now we're setting it in policy that you must now go out and and ask local businesses first to give quotes. I mean, best practices is you would get three quotes. I mean, if you have a leaky toilet, you're not gonna. Or... I, don't, I don't know what gets three quotes. <clears throat> I thought there was a dollar, anything under a dollar amount. Well, a little higher, but you know, I mean, when you have like a switch here, like we did, you know, I use a I town just, electrician yeah. and a town plumber. Yeah, I think it's just covered under good business practices. And you know. That's what we have to do. Um, I, th I was always understanding that the procurement laws say anything under a certain amount, you must get three quotes. Unless you have. Yes, that's right. There, it, there is a dollar number that says there you is. have to get. The procurement laws are going to say you have to get over a certain, I don't know what the dollar is, over a certain dollar amount, mm -hmm. you have to get three no, quotes. You have to solicit three quotes. You don't have to get three quotes. But it also says best practices is you should get three quotes. Right. Or, or you should solicit three quotes always. Always, mm -hmm. right. And now, just, for, that's just filed under good business practice, mm -hmm. and that's what they tell you to do. But like you say, if it's something that's going to be so simple and it's going to take you more time, and that's the problem. I've got a leaky water thing. No, I, mean, I, I totally agree on all of the things. Mm -hmm. So we do need to give the best files and preference. Mm -hmm. But say, suppose uh, town hall or uh, DPW if something needed. So we have to call one electrician. We have to get only one electrician code. Uh, we go, this person is going to get code from person A. He will be getting code from person A all the time. What about the other people? Oh, I wish I would have known it. I would have given my code. So no, it's fair to I, notify everyone. Again, I, 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 like, I think we all like the idea. We just have to try to... <laughs> we don't know. It says right here, when municipal departments procure quotes for goods and services, should there be a business in town who offers those goods and services, the municipal department shall request a quote from that town to business. Well, that, that's problematic because of the more than one business. So if we change this to, you know... It's not a problematic. What I'm saying is, you know, if we have all the list of people who are electrician, plumber, all those guys, we can send it in one single email. I don't think we have that list. We don't have And it. that list is going to be ever changing. It will be changing every day. So they will be contacting the town, hey, I want to be on the list. That's what I think. We should leave it up to them to contact us. Maybe put something out there, say, if you want to be called in your yeah. business in town, send Giant us a copy of your insurance and all this other stuff so we have it for, available for the people so, so like they the, can make their decision. Like the list of people who are signed up, right. they get the list. Because if we leave it then up to the contractors, it's up to them. You didn't call us. We would have loved to call you, but, you know, we sent out the stuff. Just Then we can make a base list. Maybe we're going to have to do this every year, you know what I mean, because it does change. Maybe... I hate that. That sounds tough, but I, I, we can do it every two I, years. I, I think mean, it doesn't you know, matter we do have something in process. Right. So mm -hmm. the planning board or the select board, if they need to get an agenda, they sign in for that. Listen. Mm -hmm. Similarly, if they want to hop into this, let them sign in. Right. All we have to do is only one email. Or we don't have to do anything. Well, I mean, if we put it out that there's a West Boylston bid list, that you will be, you'll be on the list, you'll be contacted, but what if we get 12 electricians? Do we what have if we get none? This policy <laughs> says you must call local businesses. Right. The policy isn't, isn't approved yet. Well, no, I'm saying, but this policy as it's written says we must, so if none of them say they want to, they, they don't even want to call from us because, like, you know, you said, they're, they're so then busy, they a, probably don't. They, they, you know, they, they could put a time limit, you know. For this bit, you know, this is the time limit. I think, I think we all agree that the current way things are going, we do call local businesses. Yeah. So why don't we just take a look, put this off, and then think of how we might want to make changes to it? I don't know. If you just want to make it as simple as I mean, you must we, get at least one quote, or if, if you want to come up with some type of list, or we want to ask other towns on a, on a list how they might do something like this. I mean, that's always... Do you know, Nancy, if any other towns have policies like this? Oh, no one has one. 
You looked. Oh, you already looked around. I sent an email. It's tough because they probably they're probably in the same boat as us. When they were well, the whole thing is is when times are tough, there's everybody wants to do it. When business is going crazy, no one wants to come. So it's kind of tough. So that's why I think we have to leave it up to them to give us the information. But I think we should table it and get all that. Okay. We got to see actually how many things we're actually going to be doing. You know, plumbers, electricians, garage door companies. I mean, we've got a lot of stuff. So you want to continue the public hearing? Yeah. Why don't we do that? So I make a motion to continue the public yeah. hearing. I make a motion second. to continue the public hearing. No, it's not. On. Oh, right. oh, you did. Oh, second. 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 All right. We're good. Second. Good. <laughs> good. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So, what are we continuing mm -hmm. for? To revise what the, what is written. Come up with. A, uh, think about and revise this, and come back and. So we would have so to. So, do you want to continue it into your next selectman's meeting? Why don't we just close the public hearing and next time we have a posting? Because, I mean, th when you, uh, yeah, whatever you guys say. Okay. I mean, I know we've, we just voted on this, but I, I think a, a simple solution is to change the language to say you must solicit from at least one business, in one town business. That way there's no... Hey, I didn't get a call. Hey, the policy says one town business. It doesn't say I totally agree. who or where. Totally agree. That one person who. Uh, is it going, that one person will be co contacted every single job. One person so will be contacted. That becomes a partiality. How are you going to justify we are giving an honest, open to all the business? How are you going to justify it now if the guy that changes the light switch is the same guy every time. How is that an honest and open thing without this policy? That's why we need a list of names that we can just, maybe make it as simple as go to the next guy on the list. You know, I called this guy last time, I'll call this guy the next time. The honest thing is, honest open thing will be inform everyone over on the train. That's, that's a great idea, but there's no way for us to get that Agreed. list. Okay. So I think what we've done in the past is we post, we listed all the things the town may want to do. And I said, if, if you're interested in being called when we have these issues or giving a price, let us know. And that's how we picked an electrician and a plumber. Right. And, and how, is it, how is that disseminated? How do we get that out? Yeah. Well, we, what is the old way we do it all the time? The, the newspaper may put it, we put it on the, you know, we, yeah, on the we're not going to knock on everybody's door that's a plumber. Right. And, I mean, not as a formal bid, but more as a you know opportunity for employment type of thing, for jobs. I just don't. I, I like the idea. It's a great idea, but I just don't want to put the a lot of work on the the department head. You know, it's some a lot of new work under the policy. So they're making sure because now it's a policy. They have to follow it. You know, there could be issues if they don't. We find out they don't. So I don't know. Why don't we continue until we figure out what we're going to do? You want to can, can, can continue it for, what if it's for three months or a month and a half, two months? You can do whatever you want. You already you already made a motion to continue it. Right. Okay, then. Well, I was just curious what you wanted to continue it to. to. To a time to be determined. Did I vote? I don't remember. You didn't vote me. Oh. You did. You did. Oh, we did. We did okay. vote. Okay. Aye. <laughs> John, senior center update. All right, uh, we're getting close. We got the uh, a few issues with the lawn, a couple issues with the parking lot. Inside, it's pretty much done. We had a couple little things inside, but uh, we're getting very close. We have one invoice. Uh, all right, you done? Yep. RAC payment uh, number fourteen, sixty-seven thousand four hundred and sixty-eight dollars. So. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? So yeah, moved. the only thing is a general update, I would just like to say. <clears throat>